आत्मनिर्भर भारत इज इसेंशियल फॉर विक्ट्री इन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट This is one of the biggest lessons from India's Operation Sindhur, and Chief of Defence Staff General Anil Chauhan has given a clarion call on self-reliance in defence. He was speaking specially on disruptive technologies, for example, unmanned aerial vehicles, unmanned combat aerial vehicles, and counter unmanned aerial vehicle systems or counter UAS. Now, in a very powerful statement, General Chauhan said India must not depend entirely on foreign technology. or foreign weapons or foreign systems when it comes to warfare because remember we've suffered in the past when post pokhran sanctions were imposed on india our entire seeking and sea harrier fleet was virtually grounded because neither the americans nor the british were giving indian spares so what's the road ahead we bring you more in this report Chief of Defence Staff General Anil Chauhan calls for indigenous drone and counter UAV capability terming it a strategic necessity for India. Their unbridled and rampant use in modern day conflicts prove not only their utility but also their uh, ubiquity. They augmented the, they augment manned systems and enable militaries to conduct simultaneous operations across multiple domains with fewer resources and minimal danger to human lives general chauhan highlighted how operation sindhur has shown the importance of indigenously developed drones operation sindhur has showed us as to why indigenously developed counter us systems and counter us systems built for our terrain and our needs are crucial we cannot uh, rely on imported niche technology that are crucial for our offensive and defensive missions we must invent and build and safeguard ourselves he revealed that on may 10th pakistan used unarmed drones and loitering munitions during the conflict during operation sindhur on 10th of may pakistan had used unarmed drones and loitering munitions none of them actually could inflict any damage to indian military or civilian infrastructure most of them most of them were utilized uh, through a combination of kinetic and, and non kinetic means uh, and some of them in fact could be recovered in almost intact conditions the cds made it clear india can't afford to rely on foreign technology for crucial combat capabilities if you are developing systems which are own their capabilities are not known to the enemy and that may Uh, add an element of surprise when actually you are in face to face in some the initial encounters at least amid the call for atmanirbharta india scaling up drone innovation from the battlefield to the labs it is clear the era of self reliant defense is here bureau report india today from azerbaijan armenia to israel hamas to russia ukraine and of course india's operation sindhur we very clearly learned that disruptive technology is an absolute game changer and that is why india has to be atmanirbhar that's essential to win when it comes to quality quantity upgrades drones and counter drone system joining me on this india today special broadcast is senior journalist and my colleague sandeep punithan uh, sandeep disruptive technology where do we stand today vis-a-vis -vis not just pakistan but pakistan as deputy chief general rahul singh pointed out pakistan and china and turkey operating in tandem especially when it comes to their ucavs unmanned combat aerial vehicles their long range high altitude drones medium endurance drones and long endurance drones well gorov we uh, held ourselves up uh, quite well during operation sindhur we deployed a range of indigenous uh, drones but you know the uh, what the chief of defense staff is literally saying is that we have to look out for the future because the enemy already knows the kind of capabilities we have shown in this round we have to be atmanirbhar we have to ensure that the entire drone ecosystem is indian uh, is indigenous because there have been concerns in the past that a lot of these uh, components flight controllers the most crucial part of this were from our northern neighbor because china yes. has such a vice grip on the entire drone ecosystem they are literally uh miles ahead of the rest of the world they're even supplying components and uh parts to the russian federation for its war in ukraine but the uh, chief of defense staff is talking about looking at a new range of indian solutions for indian wars and drones are very key to that and the most important thing gorov is that 
while we've seen drones flying at the usual speeds, you have those quadcopter kind of drones, the hobby drones which fly at you know uh, slow speeds, something like 50 to 100 kilometers an hour. You need a new era of fast power, jet power drones uh, which fly at fast uh, speeds, 500, 600. All of these are uh, you know 500, 600 kilometers an hour. Many of these are already in the testing stage. The Air Force has ordered several of these. A few years back, these we are being given to understand are okay. being inducted slowly, these jet power drones. And there is a huge opportunity here, uh, Gaurav, as the Chief of Defence Staff mentioned, for Indian indigenous defence. There's something like 40,000 crore worth of emergency purchases. A lot of them are drones that are going to happen over the next uh, couple of months. So, huge And you need all sorts of drones. You need uh, uh, drones with jet engines, uh, unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Group Captain Augustine Vinod uh, joins me on this broadcast. Group Captain Vinod, you've been a former fighter pilot, a Mirage 2000 pilot, but you're also associated with the drone ecosystem. Where do we stand today uh, when it comes to one, unmanned combat aerial vehicles, those jet part engines, uh, jet engines, and two, on stealth unmanned combat aerial vehicles? Uh, great question, Gaurav. In fact, I remember talking to you a couple of years ago, I think three years ago on this very particular subject about the RCS of a drone. The radar cross-section of the drone in itself is so small that it is smaller than a stealth fighter. So the aim of a stealth fighter like F-35 or AMCAR, whatever is going to come up in the future, Aim is to reduce the, the radar cross section in the drone. It is as it is very small. The one which is right behind me, it, the radar cross section. We measured this on the um, uh, on an equipment. The radar cross section is something like uh, two square uh, centimeters. So it is very very small. So Aim, detecting yeah. these drones using radar is going to be a it difficult. B it's going to be very at very close range. Second and most important thing uh, is why the world suddenly is waking up to this, uh, you know, the new weapon called, uh, ubiquitous weapon called drone, because of its success um, in uh, Ukraine-Russia war, it's just when Ukraine hit these most strategic fighters in, uh, in Russia uh, with impunity, and it's not so much of success when um, Pakistan tried to hit us and we did, we countered it with, uh, you know, D4 systems. Mm. So now the world has understood the beast of this drone. If you tame this beast correctly, if you design this beast correctly, if you have the adequate safeguards in this beast, it is unbeatable. Else it will fall, you know, like an uh, evening bug. So that is and, and, one aspect. You know, and the, when you when you look at India's drone ecosystem, Sandeep, the private sector is being roped in in a very big way to go in for high-end technology. Um, that will be essential. But how much is the private sector being able to rise to the occasion? Well, Gaurav, the private sector has delivered on some very significant projects. There are uh, jet-powered drones that the Indian Air Force has ordered from the private sector. There's uh, there's a weapon called the Suresh Shastra, which was uh, ordered about two years back. These we are given to understand uh, are going to be the drone swarms of the future. These are being acquired in numbers, in the hundreds, uh, but of course the Air Force would want them in the thousands because these have to be brought in significant numbers to uh, you know offset your adversary's capabilities. So the private sector has really uh, you know risen to the occasion, uh, Gaurav. It has uh, you know filled in the gaps which uh, the DRDO has kind of allowed them to fill in. While the DRDO looks at bigger systems, strategic systems, there has been a conscious decision to bring the private sector in into the yes. low end of the spectrum, the, the small quadcopter drones, the slower flying drones, the tactical drones, all of that has been left uh, wide open for the private sector. And of course, we've seen a number of uh, companies come in. There have been some very remarkable Indian Air Force projects like the Meher Babar Swarm Drone yes. Contest that have literally seeded, uh, you know, entire drone ecosystems. I mean, that was something that the Air Force created with very little investments. And today you have a very large uh, drone ecosystem worth tens of thousands of crores. So the government is fully aware of the need for creating this uh, drone ecosystem where the private sector is a very, very big part of this entire uh, ecosystem. And that what? next big weapon system, and you'll hear much more on it uh, on Battle Cry and Group Captain Augustine Vinod and Sandeep Nithan will be joining me there, is on the stealth 
unmanned combat aerial vehicle. So you'll have manned, unmanned tandem teams in operations. Where are we on that? How fast do we need to move? Because this is a very uncertain environment where the government has very clearly said Opsindur is still on. We'll be tracking that story closely. Group Captain Vinod, my apologies. I've run out of time on this part of the show, but lots more on the battle cry over the weekend. A quick break. News and updates continue on India Today. Stay with us.